joining us, our guest Ben Johnson. He's a trustee on the Alvord Unified School Board. Where, what does Alvord cover? Pretty much, um, you look at the 90, Riverside as a city, Tidal Mall, La Sierra area, um, Arlanza, and then a little bit of Corona. Got it. Okay, I want to speak with you about challenges facing all school districts, and that is the general budget crisis facing our state. On the ballot this fall, we will have two budget initiatives, two tax initiatives, that focus upon education funding. Proposition 30, supported by the governor, would increase sales tax by a quarter cent for four years and income tax on the wealthy for seven years. Prop 38, supported by Molly Munger, would increase taxes on everyone from 0.4% to 2.2% on a sliding scale. What is your sense of these two initiatives, sir? I think there's... Um and actually there was going to be three because the was teacher going be. was going to teach association they were going to have their own and they went with the governor um, I think there's positive and negatives to both uh, I, quite frankly I, I think that the governor's budget looks at not just uh, k-12 education but mm -hmm. also looks at k-14 through and um, UCCSU exactly and then the you know Molly Munger's initiative uh, really focuses on local control that but dollars that are supposed to go to schools don't need to go to Sacramento first. They go right Goes to the school. Goes in a lockbox, uh, as Al Gore so would I'm say. So I'm a little biased. I, I, I like that aspect of it. But I, I think whether it's 30 or 38, um, when you look at what's happened to our schools over the last several years, schools need the money. We've had, you know, over, I think, the last couple of years, we've had over $20 billion in cuts. Well, let's talk about that because there is concern that with both initiatives on the ballot, there will be confusion mm -hmm. and... When you consider that in June the voters said no to a cigarette tax, that the voters just are not in the mood to increase taxes on themselves. I, I think you're right. Um, I, I'm concerned, I think, as everybody is, that neither one of the initiatives are going to pass, that you have two things on the ballot that's confusing to people. There's also local initiatives. And we'll talk um, about that momentarily. That are on the ballot. Um, I'm concerned they're going to pass, but I think they need to be put on the ballot. We've got to give the voters but, knowledge about it now. Let me say this. If I look at the Inland Empire, I mean, this is an area that tends to vote more red than blue, mm -hmm. yet in 2008 it went a little more blue. It I did. think one of the two counties voted for President Obama. And if you look at Prop 30, let's say, if it does well in Riverside County, it's winning statewide. That's right. And so I really want to get a sense from you. How do you think this initiative is doing today? Do you believe? It's okay. You got Sorry. your iPad going. It's Sorry, all good. I apologize. It's a modern, <laughs> it's modern technology. And it just went board. off in the middle. I love that. Um, I, you know, when you look at the polling, and we actually did some polling for um, the initiative that Alvor is doing to refinance. Um, I think even in tough times, if you're if you educate the electorate they will support initiatives. I think the biggest concern is if you're going to give them money. Riverside County, I mean, this is a, to me, on an initiative like this, it's a bellwether county. It, it is, but I, I do think that when you talk to parents and they see in their classrooms that, let's say 10 years ago, the biggest concern was laptops and technology. Right. And, 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 and buzzing yeah, exactly. iPads. And now it's, do we have enough paper and art supplies and glue sticks for, for the classrooms? Um, I think if we do a good job in educating people, um, it's close though. And what I hear from people, it's it's probably 50-50 right now if the initiative's passed. Well, it's interesting. Right now, a poll came out recently as we speak today, a USC poll Prop 30 was ahead 55-36. Prop 38 was behind 40 to 49, but the cigarette tax was up 60%. That's nice. And it, it lost 49.7%. <laughs> so you know, it's really hard to say. You mentioned your initiative, and that plays right into the calculation. Because what Alvord is asking its voters to do is to allow a school bond measure that passed in 2007, right. those bonds to be refinanced. And what that refinancing will do is decrease the interest rate, but at the same time, it shortens the window with which the bond will be paid back and therefore it increases the assessment on property owners by 51 bucks per 100,000. Sure, it saves money over the long period of time um, for, for the voters that, that did support the bond. Um, the other big concern too is that because of the reduction in um, housing prices, you know, it, the bans aren't as um, profitable as they were um, five years ago. So we've asked the voters basically to refinance, pay a little bit more now, save um, over the long term, and have a benefit. But what I'm wondering is, I look at other municipalities, other government entities, Los Angeles County, for example, they have put on their ballot an extension of a sales tax increase dealing with transportation. 
in November. Right. So LA County voters are being asked to increase their sales tax one cent. Now in Alvord, it's a similar situation. Not as much money, but was this good timing? I, I don't think there was much choice in the timing. We, really? we, we had several sessions about it, and it really came down to we really have no choice. If we don't do it now, then it's going to impact the general fund. We've already cut our general fund probably five million dollars over the last couple of years and to cut even more obviously that impacts the classroom. We talked to both of our association presidents and they will tell you that well, what, how much more can we take? I had a uh, classified employee talk to me the other day saying we've got three, we had five people five years ago and now we're down to two. So I think the problem is yes it's not great timing but if people can reach into their pockets and pay on average it's going to cost probably ten dollars a month more in taxes to pay that now and save jobs. Even less, actually. It's actually, a total of $10. Actually. And it's, I guess it's about $5 more per month. Per, well, I guess it's per one hundred. dollars house, so no, yeah, You're, you're your right. House. I'm not a mathematician, clearly. Neither am I. <laughs> uh, clearly. Let's go back, though, to um, state public schools generally. We know that with the governor's budget, as it's written in June, that if Prop 30 does not pass, there will be what's called a trigger cut. That's right. It's an automatic cut of about $5 billion, and a significant portion of that will be to K-12, K-14. What the governor has said is that if that happens, uh, that the school year could be cut by three, three weeks. weeks. Uh, scare tactic? Or... Uh, he's holding us hostage, Yeah, I, I think. I mean... So appropriate or inappropriate? I think the governor's priorities are out of line. I mean, you look at the high-speed train and other things the governor's done. He says education is a priority. I, I don't feel it is. Um, but what's interesting is in June, there were no cuts to education. Right. Because what he said was, is we're not going to cut. We're going to wait for Prop 30. Right. And so is it a hijacking or is it wishful thinking? Well, I, I, I think it's he's trying to for lack of better words, bullying is a probably wrong word, but that's right. the only thing I can think of. You know, uh, the governor has made choices, and so in my mind, if it doesn't pass, then does he really do the trigger effect? And we cut the, you know, we spend right now probably about 10% of our educational time in testing. And so do we... Uh, there have been discussions about right. whether we over-test. Right, so if we cut that even more, and we're already kind of ranked, uh, we had a discussion about RCC and how many students, about 90% of students go to RCC, not ready for Riverside college. Community college. Yeah, and it's interesting you talk about funding because the Superintendent of Public Instruction for California evaluates the financial wherewithal of school districts every year. And in Riverside County, 18 out of 23 school districts were deemed in financial jeopardy. Correct. I think that term is more scarier than it sounds, but Alvord was in there. Absolutely. Harupa Valley, was it Harupa Unified, Riverside Unified. I mean, these are scary times, and does it get even worse without Prop 30? It does. When you look at, and I'll just give you some brief numbers, but when you look at the average, um, California already is 47 out of 50 for per student spending. It is. And so when you look at Alvord, the average school district in California probably gets about $8,000 ADA mm -hmm. per student. We're at about 6,700. We were at 6,700 before the deficit. We'll be down to 52, and if this doesn't pass, we'll be down to 4,700. So I don't know how much more well, we cut we can take. What are you saying? Are you talking to your voters about this? I mean, the no side is, and I'm not taking a position, but you know, I mean, I look at Twitter, the no site is burning up Twitter. Yeah, I don't think we've done a good job of articulating as a district what this means. We talk about it at board meetings, but an effective campaign to the parents, to PTA, um, and working with both of our associations do that we need to do a much better job of that because it's important for everyone. We've got some time, arguably. We do, but about three months. Well, we'll now? see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. His name is Ben Johnson. He is a trustee for the Alvord Unified School District. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We thank you so much for watching California Edition.